All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come in the house of God tonight, Lord, for all the things you've done for us, Lord, we're grateful. Lord, we don't deserve any of thy blessings, but Lord, we're so thankful that you saw fit one day to save us. And Lord, we thank you, God, to know tonight that you're the God of all glory. And Father, beside thee, there's none else. And we pray tonight, God, that you bless these objects of prayer, Lord, tonight. Lord, many sick folks, God, many, some getting better, Lord, some not improving a whole lot. And Lord, some seemingly getting worse. But God, we know that you're the God, Lord, that made man. God, you know these bodies, and Lord, you know what to do for us. And I pray, God, if it be your will, God, that you'd help these folks to get better. And God, we know, Father, it's hard. sickness is hard on the body, but it's also hard on the family. And I pray, God, that you'd bless the families and give them grace, Father, a measure of grace that they might, Lord, get through this time. And Father, I pray now, God, that you would bless our church. God, I pray that you'd help us, Father, to be a light in this community to lost people. And Lord, I pray that uh, the Spirit of God would work around here. God, let us be a, a, as the church of Philadelphia, not as the church of Laodicea. Not be lukewarm, God, but we be, be hot and on fire for the Lord. God, I pray that you bless our coming Lord's Day service. I pray the Spirit of God would move in a mighty way. God, bless our service tonight. Lord, each object of prayer, God, again, we pray that you bless according to your plan. Lord, forgive us of sin, God, and failure. God, help us, Lord, we'd rightly divide the truth tonight. Have your own will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles tonight, turn with us to Revelation chapter number 4. And I'm going to back up here just a little bit. I've got, I've got, every time I study, I find other things. So I'm, I'm going to take my time with this. And uh, I, I think it'll. I think when we all get through, we'll we'll we will well enjoy uh, the book of the Revelation. And uh, most people, I think, understand pretty much what we've been talking about with the uh, the seven churches. And uh, up to these three chapters, we've cut it, covered the seven churches. Now, there's there's some more study about that concerning these seven churches and the seven parables in the book of Matthew. And I'm not going to get into that tonight. I may go back and show you those comparisons uh, before we get too far along, and I may not. But tonight I'd like to give you, and if you're, if you're uh, writing this down, I'm, I may try, and I'm not promising this, but I may try just to get, take all my outline notes and, and uh, type them out and, and uh, make them available to you when we get through or, or, or as we go through. It's just a matter of time and me getting a, getting time to do all of this. But I want to give you tonight a, a more detailed outline of the book of Revelation. It won't take me too long tonight, but I want you to have a more detailed outline than the one that uh, we gave you, which was a broad outline of the book of Revelation, what happens and what's, you know, uh, how the churches are, or how the <coughs> book is divided up. But tonight I want to give you a more detailed outline so if you're if you're uh, taking notes I'll I'll read slow tonight uh, but we see in in uh, Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat uh, was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, like unto an emerald. Now, I see some things here that reference the Old Testament uh, in the Levitical priesthood. And that is in these two stones. And you'll stay, if you'll study that, like I said, I don't know if I'll ever get back to this or not. Uh, but if you'll study that, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, what I've studied so far, the, these two stones are, are in, the, in the breastplate of the high priest's garment. And so that might, that'll be something interesting to you if you want to study it in case I don't get back to that. And there's uh, some thought about the rainbow. But in this particular verses of chapter number 4, Somewhere here, uh, just, just in this first verse, we see a picture of the church being caught up when, the, when uh, Jesus steps out with the voice of a trumpet. And uh, the trumpeting voice is a loud voice, one that all hear. When you hear a trumpet play, 
Uh, everybody within hearing distance is, will hear that trumpet uh, because of its trumpeting sound, the way, that it, the way that it carries out. And when Jesus comes back with a voice of a trumpet, uh, then he will call those that are in hearing distance uh, from heaven, he'll call those up to be with him. He'll say, come up hither. And those that are in hearing distance are those that are born again in the grace of God. Now, all over the world, they'll hit the, the voice of the trumpet, the trumpeting call of God will go out, and when it goes out, the church is going to go up. And he's going to say, come up hither. Now, uh, this is the last mention of the church, so we know that the church is not going to go through the tribulation. Now, I don't know, you may have been taught or you may have heard in the past that uh, the church will go, go through three and a half uh, years of the tribulation. There, that, that is called a mid-tribulation rapture. Now, I don't believe that because the Bible doesn't teach that. Uh, the Bible says we're going to be saved from wrath through him. And so, uh, being that is so, this next portion of Scripture takes up on the, on the level of uh, the tribulation. While we're in heaven, the tribulation is going on on earth. And so we'll not be a part of that tribulation, not three and a half years, not one day, not one minute, uh, because when the rapture takes place, the bride of Christ is going to go home. Now, the church is not mentioned again until, I believe it's chapter 22, when it, when it talks about, or 21, when it, when it talks about us being uh, the things that we're going to be when we come back with ten thousands of his saints, those when we come back with him and he's going to bring us back and ten thousands of his saints, you and I will be with him. That's the bride. That's the bride coming back with the bridegroom to set up the millennial on the, you know, on the earth during the millennial reign. So it's very important that we understand that, that we as believers will not suffer any part of the tribulation. Now, I'm, I'm going to give this to you. I'm, try, I'm trying to keep it simple where I can understand it. And so we see chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, we see the introduction to the book of Revelation. I'm not going to read all this. I'm just going to give you this outline. And then next of all, from chapter 1 and verse 10 uh, through uh, verse 18, we see Christ in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks or the seven churches that's what we see in those verses and then uh, number two we see in chapter two and three the church and its departure from the truth the church as as the you know uh, being made up of many and how many depart from the truth and uh, you know all those church ages we mentioned to you including that of the persecuted church and that church of the dark ages which uh, you know Church under the under the Roman Catholic uh, system, papal, papal system was uh, persecuted highly by them, and so that's something you know that's something people don't like to hear. But that's that's really what happened during those medieval days, during that dark uh, the days of darkness that were on uh, on the the church. And so in chapter four and five, we see the saints uh, that are enthroned and glorified. That's what we're going to see when we begin this, this study here. We're going to see the, the saints uh, enthroned and glorified in these chapters. And then uh, you find the... Uh, now, John, John the Beloved, as he wrote this, you know, as he penned this down from the Isle of Patmos, there's a lot about that. You know, I'm not going to that, but study that. But as he, uh, as he wrote this down, he did not get a... He does not show us a big insight in the book of Revelation to what's going to go on there. But you read Paul's writings, and he gives us more of an insight about how it's going to take place. We're going to be there forever in the presence of the Lord. And, and so Paul gives us a little bit of insight into what, uh, what that, in, that glorification is going to be like uh, for the believer. And then chapter number 6 through chapter number 8 and verse number 1, we see the seven seals that are opened by the Lamb of God. And uh, we'll look at these and we'll try to cover them as simply as possible so that I can understand them. I think if I can understand them, anybody in here can understand it. And so that's our, that's our uh, point in doing it this way is so that I can understand them and so that you can understand them. Now in, these, in all of these that I'm, I'm giving to you here, 
There are several chapters that are parenthetical chapters. They're, they're part of it, but they are in parentheses, and they'll go somewhere else, and they'll be a blessing, but I'll show you those as we go along. Chapter 7 being one of those parenthetical uh, chapters, but there's a few more. And then chapter number 8 and 9 through chapter 11, uh, 15 and 19, uh, we see the seven trumpets, and we'll, ex we'll try our best to explain those seven trumpets and what they are and what they're, gonna, you know, what they're going to entail. And then in chapter number 12 and 14, uh, we see uh, two actors and the, re and the results of their actions. So we'll, we'll look at this and see their, you know, these two actors that, that we'll see and the results of their actions and whatever, you know, what is going to uh, take place then. And then in uh, chapter 15 and 16, we'll see the seven vials, seven different vials. So uh, there's, uh, you notice all through this, there's seven churches, there's, uh, you know, seven candlesticks, there's seven churches, there's seven vials, there's seven trumpets. All of these numbering being the number seven because number seven is God's number of completion. Anytime you see the number seven in Scripture, pay close attention because it's, it's, uh, it's the, the uh, number of completion in the Scripture, such as number six is the number of man, number five is the number of grace, and so on. And number one is the number of God, and number three is the number of the Trinity. And so we see all of these things, and, and we realize the importance of, of numbers in Scripture, so the number seven is God's number of completion. When God starts something, he finishes it. We started with the first church of Ephesus. We'll end with the last church of Laodicea. It's God's, God's way of, of uh, number of completing. And then in chapter 17 and 18, we'll see the destruction of the, of the risen Babylon, the Babylon Empire that's going to rise. We'll see that destruction in chapter 17 and 18. And then in chapter 19, verse 1 through 21 and verse 8, uh, we see that this covers from the fall of, of Babylon until the eternal state. And that's, you know, that's, that's, where we're gonna, uh, that's where we're going to end in those chapters, the eternal state of the believer. Chapter 21 and verse 9 uh, through chapter 22, verse 5, uh, we see the bride of the Lamb. We see the description of the, of the bride of Christ. And in chapter 22, 6 through 21, we see... We, we, Think about the warnings that are given, you know, to those that, that hear and those that uh, turn away. We hear those warnings. And then the last verse of the, of the Bible, last, a couple of verses of the Bible there, we, we see the last prayer of Scripture. And what does John say? Even, Lord, gee, even so, Lord, come quickly. And so we see that in the last. So here is, is, is much more of a... a broader outline that we'll, if, if, if we'll study it this way, I think it'll be uh, much better for us as we study the scripture. And when I get to studying, I get bogged down because I, I get to thinking about all that's going to happen and how God's going to carry it all out. But you know, God, God made the universe. He made the planets. He made the stars. I just heard the other day where, uh, what was that Voyager, that, that little thing they sent up that went you know, went to Mars and went, how long has that thing been traveling? 30-something years that thing's been traveling. And they said it had now left our, uh, our universe, our, our solar universe. It now, it now left that. And it was going to what they, whatever they call that uh, part of space where we don't know nothing about. And there it's, there it's going. And I thought, you know, that, that's something man's done. And it's still sending back. Uh, information all those billions of miles away it's still sending back information and I also I thought it very interesting that they put a <laughs> an eight track uh, eight track tape in that thing and it is in many different languages they said to try to communicate with anything that might be out there and I thought if it's eight track eight track tape they'll never be able to play that thing they'll never know what's on it <laughs> And, and but uh, but you know to to think that that uh, men so believe and you know that's that that was what was happening that was man's thinking thirty years ago, but listen God knows what's out there, and this God that I you know that I serve He knows what's out there He started this thing, 
you know, in the beginning, and he is going to end this thing just exactly like it says in Revelation. Now, there's a lot of mess going on in the world, and, I, I, and the more I hear about it, uh, the more excited I get. I was listening to the news here tonight how Syria, their president, Fox News, got an exclusive interview with him. And, of course, he's denying everything. You know, he's, he's not denying everything and putting the, you know, putting the, uh, pointing the finger toward the U.S. And I didn't get the list to it all. I stopped out there when I got out of the car and he was still the interview. But I wondered if he was ever going to bring into uh, question the uh, Israel's weapons that they have because he said it was part of the international agreement that, that everybody do away with their uh, WMDs in the region. And I'm sure that's where he was heading to, but I, I didn't get to hear that part, and he may, you know, may not ever say it. But, friend, it's all about Israel. All of these things that are coming to pass, and you're not hearing much about Israel in the news. But I'll tell you something. They're the focus of this, whether, whether the news ever covers it or not. It's all about aligning against the nation of Israel, and we're going to see all of that here uh, in the book of Revelation. We're going to see the, uh, these two, I mentioned here a minute ago, the, uh, the two powers, the two... Uh, you know the the two uh, powers there and what they're going to you know what they're going to accomplish and and when it all said and done uh, Israel's going to come out the victor because that's God's chosen people and he has always taken care of them but the whole world is going to come against Israel and we again, again we're going to see that during the tribulation the whole world's going to come against Israel uh, from the north it'll be it'll be uh, Moscow from the south it's going to be it's going to be Egypt and, and they're, they're the ones that's going to come against the nation of Israel. And, uh, you know, again, uh, these other there'll be other countries involved, but the biggest one is going to be the, uh, the bear from the north. It's going to come down, and they're going to, you know, they're going to try to overtake, uh, overtake Israel, which they will be defeated. Now, if that outline helps you any better, uh, just give it to you tonight, and then we're going to try to cover it that way if the Lord let us go that way. Uh, but if I start getting you confused, you, you say, uh, preacher, we're not understanding. But I'm trying to follow the Lord in this. And I believe as long as we do that, I believe everybody's going to get, uh, you know, get some, some good knowledge of this because we, I think it's important that we have knowledge of what's going on because people are going to start asking you questions. And, uh, you know, and, and we should be able to answer them. And if someone asks you now about the uh, seven candlesticks, in Romans or in Revelation, I believe you could tell them that's that's the seven churches of Asia. Were those real churches? Yes, they were real churches. Now, what did they all mean? And I believe you know, with uh, maybe with your notes in hand or or uh, whatever, you could tell them what those what the church ages are. And so that's what we need to be need to have knowledge of in ourselves. Just if for no other reason, just so that we'll know that we have uh, carefully studied this book that tells us about the things that are shortly going to come to pass. Now, as this uh, new section begins, through this book of Revelation, I'm going to give you these. I'm going to give you seven more things, then we're going to go home. Through these seven, or, or this book of Revelations, we see seven persons uh, represented here. Again, seven is the number of completion. We say, see seven persons that are represented in the book of Revelation. I'll give, them to, give those to you uh, tonight. The number one person is Jesus Christ. Now, he's the number one person. He, this book of Revelation is about him, and it is his revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And even all through the Scripture, the number one person of, of uh, the book of, of, of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about him. Now, so we see him highly evident in this book of Revelation. He's, you know, we've done seen his description of uh, as he walks among the candlesticks. So you'll see his description uh, there. And then we see that there is the great dragon, the person of the great dragon, which is none other than, uh, than the devil. And as, as the devil is, you know, he makes war against, against Israel. He makes war against the Lord. You know, he's trying his best to... Uh, to overtake everything, but in the end, uh, his head is completely crushed when he is cast into the lake of fire, uh, where you know where the beast and the false prophet are. And then we so, so we see the uh, the person of of uh, that great dragon, the the devil. And then there's two beasts in in the book of Revelation that we'll see. One of them is a man being the Antichrist. The other is a political beast. And so we'll see these two beasts. 
uh, in the book of, Re book of Revelation, I'm sorry, the, the, the Antichrist is a separate entity. The two beasts, I've just told you one of them, and the other one just left my mind. I didn't write it down. Uh, but anyway, we know that one is political uh, in, in nature. That beast is political. And then we see that there is another person, which is the person of Antichrist. Now, it's been much said, who is the Antichrist? Uh, where is the Antichrist going to come from? Is he alive today? Well, I believe we're close enough to come in the Lord that he's alive today. And, you know, you, you look, Google search that, and you see what all kinds of answers you come up with. And no man knows him. He's not being revealed. But one of these days, the Antichrist will be revealed. There's some things we do know about him. He will be a man of great swelling words. He will be a man that has all the answers. He will be a man that, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that can speak peace, and everybody's going to listen to what he's got to say. Now, it's been, it's been said by many that it'll, that, that will come out of the, the very ones that persecute Christians, that it will come out of the Roman Catholic Church. I don't know. I don't know who it is. But whoever it is, it'll be one that, it, that has great swelling words. So uh, we'll look who, at who the Antichrist is. Then there's also the king of the north. And uh, we, we see that person is the king of the north, which is of Russia. And then we see the king of the south, which is going to be, I believe, that of Egypt, because they're, they're south of, of uh, you know, and, they, and they've already made some moves against Israel. They're no longer, you know, they're, they're no longer a friend of, well, they never have been a friend with Israel, but they kind of, uh, we kind of bought them off all these years, and now all that's changed, so uh, anything goes there now. So we see the king of the south, and we believe that to be Egypt. And then we see that person is of God. Uh, that person that is, is uh, uh, you know, comes down from the north also. So all these personages we see in the book of Revelation, and they've all got some meaning. They've all got uh, scriptural meaning, and they've all got meaning to them that will uh, help us better explain uh, the book of Revelation. Now, again, as you read along with us, or as you read ahead, or however you read the book, just take it for what it says and let the Holy Spirit help you with what it means. Uh, it's not as difficult as, as many people try to make it. And so I, you know, I'm studying after some men that know a whole lot more about this than I do. And as we study after them and, and the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us, he'll also speak to you and give you what he wants us to out of this, out of this blessed book. You know, we, we can go into, like I say, I doubt very seriously we're going to go verse by verse. But what we do want to do is cover it so that, so that we can all understand it. Now, let me ask you this tonight before we dismiss. Is anybody thoroughly confused that I can help you with? Does everybody pretty much understand where we're going here? Shake your heads at me if you are. I don't see nobody look like a calf looking at a new gate, so maybe we're making some progress here, all right? But you continue on in study, and I, if, if I get started tonight, we'll, uh, we'll, not, you know, we'll not get finished at all. Uh, but I'm, th this next study we'll do as we, as we leave this earth, and we find ourselves around the throne of God. What a day that's going to be. And we find ourselves with him. And we find ourselves eternally with him. And wherever he goes, we're going to go. And when he comes back, we're going to come back with him. What a blessing to know you're saved tonight in God's grace. And anyone that's not saved, friend, it doesn't matter what, you know, what they've done in life, whether they've you know, joined the church, whether they've never accepted Christ, whether, you know, no matter what, if people are going to get right with God, today is the day. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for the word of God tonight. Lord, help us. God, as we continue to study the book of Revelation, God, what you're going to reveal to us. And God, I pray that you'd help us to rightly divide it. Lord, don't let the devil confuse us. And I pray, God, that you'd help us to rightly divide the truth. Bless us now as we go our way tonight. God, may you have preeminence in our lives. And God, may we look for your coming. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, anyone else got anything now before we dismiss? Did I have something else? No, I'm not even going to go there. Amen. We'll, we'll take that up uh, probably on Sunday night. So you can, you can plan on Sundays and Wednesday nights being right here. This is where we're going to be. And so invite people to come. If they, if they were interested in the book of Revelation, invite them to come. And uh, certainly we can catch them up on, on what they've missed because up to this point, it's, you know, it's been simple. Now, the, uh, now the, uh, some of the uh, more difficult things 
you know, that we might think are difficult, which are not, are, are fixing to come. So invite folks to come or invite them to listen. Frank's down, uh, putting all these on, on the website, so we invite them to, to uh, uh, look at it on the website or hear it on the website. All right. Anyone else? All right. Let's stand and we'll be dismissed. Again, go praying. Amen. Come praying. And pray God bless us on the coming Lord's Day. All right, you're standing, you're dismissed. Come back Sunday. Good night and God bless you.